All right. Uh, I don't know. It's Saturday again. I was uh, working on a little John Deere. I think the last video I had the steering wheel in the steering steering column. Everything's lined up. I did get a nut for it. I got to tighten it up, but uh, got a nut. Uh, down to running lines. Um, I think the last video too, I had the pressure lines hooked up here. Uh, I need to come out of this top port here. And I want to come back and up and over along along the transmission here uh, it's just too hard like, there's nothing the brake valves underneath here and I didn't want to put it down on here where you were stepping on it and this is the dipstick for checking the rear end I didn't want to be in front of that so I think the best bets up over up and over here along this side here to this point turn it up go up through this hole 90 degree over and 90 degree into the pressure port so uh, all right <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'll bring you back okay I kind of got that bent up uh, I'll show you the bender here in a minute. But I come back 10 inches, 90 degrees straight up, 90 degrees over 7 because that's from this center line to the transmission is about 7 inches. Uh, 90 degree, I gotta pull that hose out and then I gotta come up here to where this hole is and uh, yeah I gotta line up that hole I got a little mark there but I think it's too far forward I'm gonna move back here a little bit uh, <clears throat> yeah and then that'll go back in against that uh, steering cover here and uh, 90 degree up through that hole so all right, I'll bring you back in a minute here. Okay, here's the bender. Um, I don't think it's made by Swedge Lock, but uh, Swedge Lock manufactures fittings, so they had this bender made. I think the salesman sold us that thing, but. Uh, uh, this is just 3 8 steel hydraulic tubing. I think the wall thickness is uh, 0.065. Uh, yeah, that's what we use. Uh, basically, most of your steel lines on hydraulic systems, I've got tools here I can cut and flare it out. So we put JIC fittings on the ends of it. Uh, Anyhow, that's what I'm working on, and uh, a couple more bends here. I'll get it up to that panel, and uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, there it is. It's in there where it should be. Clears the throttle. Um, I'm going to go up on the other side of that, which will move over in this hole. And uh, I'll move over and put it on the fitting there. I have to mark it to length, cut it, and uh, flare it. And likewise down here, cut it off with that fitting on top, right there. And uh, yeah, I'll have to bend it a little bit, whatever it takes to... Uh, keep it from rubbing on the edge of the metal like here but uh, I think that's a pretty good fit pretty straightforward it's up out of the way uh, nothing's gonna get caught on it there 
Uh, it's out of the way of the dipstick. So this pan will come down another inch, so that'll be, it'll just lay alongside that. Uh, all right, let me get it out of there. It's kind of a, I have to mark the ends, where to cut it off, where to flare it. Uh, it's kind of a Chinese puzzle to get it twisted around in and out of there, but it does go all in one piece. I was concerned I may have to cut it and put it in in two pieces, but uh, I think I can get it back out of there, so I'll bring you back. Alright, this is uh, this is the flaring tool. I got it bent. Uh, I got my nut, and this is my sleeve. This uh, flaring tool is, let's see where it says, made by Weatherhead. And they make fittings and uh, hose and couplings for hydraulics. Uh, we're flaring this at 37 degrees. Uh, I'd suggest you don't try this with your regular uh, plumbing flaring tool. The uh, ones you buy for flaring copper tubing just don't hold up. Uh, we've had this one here. I've used this one probably for 15 years and uh, we had one just like it. We just plain wore it out. So, uh, yeah. Flaring both ends and uh, those are my nuts that I use. They have this little sleeve. This is 3 8 tubing. Uh, the tubing fits inside the sleeve. The flare goes right up against that taper and uh, that backs up the flare so it doesn't crack. Uh, yeah, can't get it in there. Anyhow, that's it. Yeah, the little sleeve keeps the tubing from cracking. Uh, yeah. Alright, I'm going to flare these and uh, I'll bring you back. Alright, well one thing I forgot to mention is when you cut the tubing, you have to deburr it and uh, make sure the end's flat and there's no burr on the inside. And don't forget to put your nut and sleeve on uh, before you flare the end. Otherwise you'll be cutting it off and it'll uh, it'll be too short then. Uh, ask me how I know. I kind of made it. <laughs> I've been doing this for 30 some years and I've kind of made it a rule that you always put the nut in the sleeve on first. That's out of there. You can't see that very well, but got a nice flare on it. Comes out. The only thing I never liked about that flaring tool is it leaves a little ridge there where it pinches the tubing, but uh, the sleeve won't slide up over it, so I have to file that off. Yeah, so. And it's something with the, tu the flaring tool because the old one didn't do it and it was, it was well worn out, so. Alright, I'll bring it back. All right, I got nuts on and sleeves. It's bent up, got back in there. Runs along there, runs along there. Putting this little eighth inch line up away from it so it doesn't rub. Runs down behind the running board, right to there. Uh, the nuts are tight, the fittings are tight. Uh, I also bent up this other one. This is one of the steering lines that comes out of the valve, comes over here to the cylinder. Uh, this panel is tapered, tapers back to the dash here, so this is bent out. 
and there's a gap here at the bottom so that both lines will come right out and just stub off right there. Uh, the cylinder will move a little bit so there'll be rubber lines coming right down in front of the clutch right into the cylinder which will be right along this area here. Uh, yeah I had about six feet of tubing and I've used it all up so I can't bend anymore. I'd put the top one back on there too and uh, bend up a return line. That top one on the far side has to go back to the pump to the suction. This one on this side is the other end of the cylinder. Uh, but no problem. I'm waiting on parts for my cylinder. Uh, I had to have a machinist thread it because I'm not that good. Uh, I had to really hunt around and find uh, 7 8 18 thread tap for my ball joints to thread into. So I'm waiting on that. And my cylinder, this was the first cylinder I cut the bottom off and uh, I had problems. I don't know if you can see it down in there. But uh, there's some pitting. It's pitted down in there and it'll just tear up the seal. So I opted out of that cylinder. Uh, I found another one. This was a case cylinder. I think it came off a little case skid loader. Problem with it was the rod was uh, bad. The customer just decided he found some other ones. Uh, so I sawed this end off in the saw. I re drilled the hole. Welded a new fitting on it, the same as this one. It's got threads internally. And this is a new another rod out of another cylinder. The piston out of this one. Uh, so yeah, the machinist he's making he's got the plug for here. He's threading the end of it for my tire ball joints. So it'll go in there. He's also making me a sleeve that I can thread the ball joint in the other end. I've got a ball joint coming. Two, yeah, I've already got one ball joint. I got another one coming. So uh, that's what I'm doing for a cylinder. Uh, this one's just a little, little heavier duty. I think the wall thickness is heavier as opposed to that one. I think this one's 3 16 and I think this one is uh, maybe that's an eighth of an inch so uh, yeah it's a little heavier duty cylinder. Uh, rods like new so I'll have to get some new seals and put in this but once I get it uh, welded together so that's just uh, just the way it goes. I don't have anything in it. Don't have anything in that one other than a little time, but uh, yeah, so. Alright, that's going to be enough for this, so thanks for watching.